What's up, people? It's your boy Jatwa, and I'm here today in Kerbal Space Program. Now, what you're seeing before you is my advanced shovel, the JDSA advanced shovel, and this is actually its lifter. Its lifter is kind of weird. <laughs> As you can see here, we actually make way for the lifter to sit right inside. And that's my dog dropping her frisbee because she's rather upset at the fact that I stopped playing frisbee with her to record something. So excuse us there, Scarlet, my dear. <laughs> All right, so this is the lifter that I have devised for the Advanced Shuttle. I know a few people have asked me for it, and this version here is going to be the release version. It is built to handle up to a few satellites in its large bay. It's Mark II bay right here, and it has really nice re-entry uh, capabilities and should not burn up now i kind of want to put another radiator back here so that may end up in the final version but it does survive when it's coming back into the atmosphere at least in the one test i've put on it because that's all i've tested just once but the reason i did this is because now normally you have to put a little bit of angle on your engines or have a hell of a lot of of gimbal to them to be able to uh, to get your craft to sit just right when it's piggyback well the whole piggyback thing does not roll with me i don't like it it looks nice but i don't like doing it because well it's extra work <laughs> so i devised this where i can actually just drop a short little shuttle in the middle and it's no freaking problem it launches just right and it handles perfectly so we're going to go ahead and let me get rid of my start bar that you can't see, but I can see. <laughs> Let's get this bird into the air and do a quick re-entry with it because we I still need to test out the last few things for it, but mostly it's ready to go. Let me also turn off Hangouts because Hangouts, when someone chimes in, is rather loud. All right, so we're ready to rock. All right. Yes, I am launching on the runway. Um, I have no reason. I just like the runway. So... <laughs> Let's go! You can see right here, I have forgotten to... Here's the difference between auto strut and no auto strut. You see how flimsy that is? Boop! We're good now. Alright, so there's your auto strut actually in action. You can actually see it wibbly wobbling around. Wibbly wobbly. And that just kind of fixes everything on it as the second I turn it on. Some people think that's OP. Some people like me don't think it's OP because reasons. I don't care. I don't like my aircraft to be flippity flappity. <laughs> so we need to start getting ourselves down here. So let's go ahead and gently, gently start to lay ourselves out. Uh, with Kerbal Engineer, I can actually see where my apoapsis is, which is fantastic, because I kind of need that. Uh, so, we're doing pretty good right now. So keep laying her out. Keep laying her out. We're doing fantastic. As you can see here, I don't have to adjust anything for the angle of the engines or the offset of the actual craft itself. No, no angling or anything required. You just launch your aircraft, watch everything smash into each other, and then continue on to orbit. And with this one, you should have just enough fuel to get into orbit. Uh, stable, a nice stable 75 orbit will do it with a bit of extra fuel, and you should have no trouble. So let me just continue on here. I kind of got myself tossed around there. We have a bit of RCS that... Woo, hoo, hoo, hoo. When it activated, it kind of kicked us down quite a bit there. All right. Still looking pretty good. And you can see right here how we're kind of settled, nestled right in the innards of this rocket, which keeps us from affecting its center of mass oh, too much, which is rather fantastic if you can keep your shuttle this size all right we are about 80 meters per second boom right oh 80 meters per second that would be really damn slow for a rocket we are 80 meters 80,000 meters up and for our apoapsis and now we're going to turn ourselves pro grade and the rest of this fuel is going to be to get us into orbit hopefully <laughs> it's more than enough fuel the problem is I kind of botch things right now because I'm 
I won't lie, I have had a bit of drink today. <laughs> And it's probably not mixing well with my Mucinex uh, and, and how delightful I am currently feeling. So I just wanted to have that beer because I needed it. So I had, I've had a few beers. <laughs> so it's, I'll probably screw this up somehow. But still, this is going pretty well so far. All right. Let's get 30 out. 30 seconds out and we're gonna start to gently bring ourselves forward here and by the time we get to 10 seconds out we're gonna be about full throttle except for I need to I need to tone that down a little bit because we're kicking up our apoapsis a bit much all right Ten seconds out. All right, here we go. Full throttle. Looking good. Looking good. All right, periapsis is jumping. Our periapsis is jumping, and our apoapsis is staying nice and stable. Ooh. <laughs> Oh my god, that is probably the best I've done under the influence. Uh, <laughs> put down the throttle, you've been drinking, Mr. Wynn Kerman. Alright, so next thing we need to do is detach ourselves and use our thrust transforming transform to get ourselves away from our lifter. And there you go, there's our nice simple lifter. Quick snapshot for me. Uh, that's our simple lifter for our advanced shuttle, and that gets us all the way up here. So, if you wanted to use something like this, I can definitely make it available. This is complete stock. <laughs> all stock. So, there is actually in here, Once let's open this up so you can see it. Inside here, there is two fuel cells. Those are not my fuel cells, those are the stock fuel cells. And we have a lot of, of RCS right here. Monoprop fuel right there waiting. We have up and back, we have our nozzles for it. And up front, we have all of our radiators that are in, actually wrapped around another fuel tank that has this heat shield strapped onto the front. So that is going to let us dissipate the heat pretty well. And that looks like a really big missile that is coming in. <laughs> It's slightly terrifying to, be, to see coming back in on you. Now, if I wanted the way I have that uh, that balanced out, I can actually fly that back in, uh, and it will. I can kind of gently land it. There's no wheels on it, but if I decided to put some wheels on it, I could then glide that back in and land it. But I need to balance it out a bit more. It hasn't made it into this version quite yet. And there's also, I forgot to put the probe core on there. So what it's meant to do, it's meant to detach, fly itself back in and land. This is meant to fly up here, detach your, your satellite, and then go about its merry way. So let's go ahead and get ourselves back retrograde. Um, let's go around the, let's go around orbit one time. <laughs> I can see our electrical charge is indeed dropping. But that is because I forgot to turn on my liquid fuel cells. So we'll be all right. I'll turn them on here in a second. <laughs> all right. So we need to try to bring ourselves back around here. When I do my burn, we'll come around right there. Hopefully that will work. I don't think it will. This is a terrible song. Okay, here we go. Uh, come, come, net none. Okay. Oh, oh, I had it set to not show me anything. Huh? Ooh, I can see everything. I can see everything. I still need to finish my comm network. I'm, I got lazy. I got really lazy. <laughs> I got so lazy. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Oh, it's gonna be such a great comm network. All right, so let's go ahead and turn these on. I think I forgot to actually map these, so oops. Let's see. 
What does two do? Two does something. I don't know what it does, but two does something. Two does not do anything. <laughs> I thought I mapped it. What does three do? Three is my solar panels, which I need to put back away because we don't don't we don't need you. We don't need you right now. Go go back. Back from whence you came. Alright, so let's go ahead and I need to map that to two. Note to self, map to two. Okay. Uh so <laughs> let's go ahead and do our burn. Let's go back to our map. And we'll kick on our maneuvering engines here. Or we won't. Or there we go. Hey, good job. All right, so let's go ahead and throttle ourselves up a bit. I doubt I'll be able to, to get near the runway, but we'll find somewhere safe to land, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully I can land it. Hopefully I can land it right now. All right. So that's going to take a while. They're the really small engines. I just wanted something small out of the way. Oh dear God! I should have should have just used the the what's it called ones the ones that the two stage ones. That would have been way better. But they seem to have a problem when you have them stored inside of a bay. They don't seem to like that very much. So I just don't use them very often in this design for this aircraft. Or shuttle, or whatever you want to call it on your merry day. Alright, how are we looking? Alright, so hopefully that will be enough. I have gotten it what I hope to be pretty close. And we're going to go for it. So, here we go. Oh, you know what? You know what, bro? That's why it's my radiators. It's no big deal. I forgot to map my fuel cells. Nice one, bro. Alright, so let's go ahead and get ourselves... Let's get ourselves down. Let's get down to downtown. All right, here we go. Watch the beauty of the sunrise. We missed that. But we get to watch the beauty of Kerbin Sands Scatterer. Which is what I really want to say, but I understand that anybody wants to wait, but that's cool. But Scatterer, man, it makes everything so beautiful. Okay, let me. we don't need the map view anymore. What we need to do now is focus ourselves on what's directly in front of us let's kick all this on turn that off that is our four internal engines that give us a nice ability to, to fly i was gonna say glide it's not really a glide we're actually flying um but we have a lot of flight time with this aircraft not as much as the prop return but this one has a lot of flight time which works out really well for me all right, so you know what? While we're doing this, I think there was one other person that said they have a motorcycle uh, when during one of my other videos. I, I'm curious. I'm curious. How many of you actually ride a motorcycle or used to ride a motorcycle or currently or used to whatever? Either which way, who, who of everybody did or used to ride, does or, oh God, this, what? How many of you used to or currently do ride motorcycles? That would be an interesting question to see the answer to. We need to start turning all this on because this is starting to get a little warm. There we go. That's mostly what those liquid fuel cells are there for because these take electricity to dissipate that heat. So we need to make sure that that is on. And you see right now it is high yellow. And unfortunately what I've noticed is that my cockpit still is getting extremely hot. So I've had to do various maneuvers to slow myself down. Then again, on my previous re-entry, I was doing almost 3,000 meters per second because I don't know why. <laughs> All right, there we go. Coming in nice and easy, nice and easy. Those air brakes don't do crap yet. <laughs> Those air brakes are there because 
once I'm coming in really hot, sometimes I'll deploy the air brakes incrementally. That's kind of a little flare, a little flare, just enough to take some of that speed away from the aircraft. So you don't have to worry about certain parts burning up. This is kind of a very worrisome part of a lot of missions is re-entry because, well, re-entry heat. <laughs> And you see right here, we still have a lot of re-entry. We still have a lot of heat being cast amongst this aircraft. We're just not dissipating enough of it. Even with the radiator and heat shield combination, you're not dissipating enough. My major concern is that cockpit, because that cockpit got hot, hot last time. So we're going to go ahead and I need to face myself prograde. There we go. So we're facing head on into the storm. And hopefully we'll make it all the way through. A little bit of flaring and a little bit of strategic maneuvering should make us get through successfully. <laughs> but yeah, how many of you used to or currently ride motorcycles? And and you know, what are you riding? What type of what what are you what is your horse? What is your your two-wheeled stallion? All right, all right. Let's not start overheating yet. None of that. None of that yet. Stop. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> stop. 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 The hell? All right. What is that? What's overheating here? Where we got? Where we got? Where we got? I'm guessing that's my uh, my little engines on the wings. But we're 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 pretty much slow enough, so it shouldn't be hurting us too bad. Let's go ahead and air brake a little bit. All right, little taps here and there. If you get it just right while you're facing prograde, you'll waggle your aircraft. That waggle will definitely cut your estimated landing down a bit, but it will save your damn aircraft. So waggle away. If you do it just right, it won't hurt you too badly, though. And those air brakes will actually gain you some of that stability back. There we go. Mostly. Mostly there we go. <laughs> okay. So here we can actually cut on our engines. Alright. Enough of that. And throttle up. There we go. All right, and let's do like that. There we go. We don't need all that anymore. So what we're doing now is we're just gonna plummet ourselves in through, get to the lower atmosphere so we can actually get some thrust from these little bitty engines. Otherwise, these little Junos aren't gonna give you very much thrust at all, and they don't have very much to start with. Once we are through, we're just gonna pull our nose up and we should have a landing over there. Um, on the land and that should be pretty good for us I mean I can you know what we're gonna try a ditch in the water just because I want to uh, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna try a water ditch all right so I think this should be pretty easy because we can get a pretty low speed so what I need to do is make sure that we're coming in nice and level and we gently tap down into the water that's going to be the key this craft doesn't have a really uh a really low uh stall speed so it's going to stall out pretty quickly so i need to find out where that's going to be we have a ton of fuel in here we, we, it, fuel in the wings we have fuel up front fuel in the back so we have a ton of fuel still so we could fly this out but i want to see how bad a water ditch is going to be and I got stuff in my eye. So let's get down to the water and we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna see what happens. We're gonna ditch this craft in the water and see what happens. All right, so we are coming up on the water. We're coming in there first. So what I need to do here is we're gonna try to come as low as we can. And then we're gonna try to break and gently touch ourselves down into the water. Uh, so this is going to be a good test of our glide 
And a good test of skill for me, because I need to see how low I am. I need to take that away. And let's see, I need to just guide myself in using using a uh, <laughs> oh, okay doing good doing good doing good Ker Kerbal engineer redux was the word I was looking for all right and blue <laughs> holy crap Okay, so what happened there is we landed way too hard. But did we survive? Yeah, sure we did. And we destroyed our aircraft. Very nice. Wow, that's very reminiscent of of I can't remember the name of the one where they where they landed way too hard with the um the rocket assisted liftoff with that ginormous air I can't remember anything right now. Someone help me in the comments down below. <laughs> Because my brain is not fully functional between the mucinex, this out, these allergies, and uh, of course the beer. So this actually has been a successful, mostly mission. My touchdown into the water did not go as according to plan, but Jeb can probably go out there with a welder and get us back in action. But this aircraft, for the most part, it's not really meant for water landings so if you do a water landing you're gonna need uh more wings i probably should have kicked up the thrust a bit to bring myself in a bit more level and then i could have gently touched down with forward velocity with a bit of forward momentum and gently coasted myself into the water which is the proper way to land into the water which of course i did not do this time around anyhow if you like what you're seeing hit that like button drop me in the comment let me know what you think I will post this craft. It is going to be available in Kerbal X because I finally got it modified down. Um, well, I wiped all the mods from it because I have been working. No, I haven't been working. I've been modifying some of the wings to add ablative parts, like an ablative paint. And those on Kerbal X are counted as a completely different mod. So uh, if I ever get done with that, I will definitely give that out to everybody. Until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video. For now, this is your boy Just One. I'm out. Peace. I mean, that's good because Jeb and I can now go for a swim because sitting in that thing, he has, he is smelling all sorts of bad right now. And did you notice he came out the front? Anyone else notice that? That's pretty. That's pretty. Uh, I like that. I like how they can they can do that. I've, it's, I've never done that unless my aircraft crashed and blew up. But anyhow, good job, Jeb. Now we're floating in the middle of nothing. Interesting. Peace. And slowing me down? Is that what it was? I was wondering where I was going so slow. I must have hit that when I hit my elbow. And that's that Baron. Bring it! It was the Red Baron, wasn't it? Or am I just talking out of false memories? That is my memory finally going on me.